Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here tonight. This is Bill Richter at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Kingwood, Texas. This is our regular Thursday evening prayer service for peace, love, and hope for January the 18th, 2024. I thank you for joining us tonight. This is a short service of scripture, prayer, some reflection on the scripture, and a time of meditation, all centered around those themes of peace, love, and hope. There are other things going on in the life of the church, some in person, some virtually, and some in a mixed format. So I will put the church web address up at the end of the service. And if you see something that you're interested in, um, you can come and check that out. Or if you need more information, please send us an email or give us a call. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Again, thank you for being here with us. It is a joy to have you join us for these services. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world, we entreat you, O Lord. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. God of love, we sometimes feel that we are lost, but your word says that you will always guide us. You do not leave us wandering through life, but you are with us sharing every moment of every day. Help us to follow your ways when we feel weary and frustrated. Help us to experience joy in our lives. May we be like well-watered gardens, which thrive because its roots are firmly planted in your love. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called and the house filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed from you and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord. And now a reading from the Gospel of Mark. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As they went a little farther, they saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Two lessons about being called. Apostles were called. Kings were called. Priests were called. Jesus was called. And the disciples were called. All called to come and follow the ways of God in a different and unique and distinct way. New Testament scholar N.T. Wright has said that the call of God is about decentering ourselves from the norms and distinctions of society and culture, and then recentering ourselves on our experiences with God. I think it's a great definition. 
if we decide that we are going to follow God's call, if we're going to be led by God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this means that we will have to disconnect ourselves from the call of other things, from the call of, of, of family dynamics, from the call of, of the ways and practices of the world that, that give us a sense of, of who we are. It's a way of, of radical change and transformation. But God is always being revealed to us in different ways, at different times, in different circumstances. So there's always an opportunity to step away from what the world is doing and to step into what God is doing. It is not an easy thing to do. It really is a journey to, to step into something that you don't know. You don't have any guarantees, any promises about what's going to happen. Um, but you have some hope. You have some sense of love and peace about it. And you're willing to take that risk, to take that leap of faith, to go in a direction that either you've been before and have fallen away from, or you've never been before and are willing to take that risk, to take it at a, at a deeper level, to take it at a different kind of pace. God is, God is patient and gentle and waiting for us, just waiting for us to open the door of our hearts so that Christ can come in. There are a number of pictures of Jesus standing at the door and knocking, um, a part of a scripture from the book of Revelation. And one of those pictures I remember, Jesus is standing with a lantern at, the, at someone's front door, and there is no knob on the, on the outside of the door. The door has to be open from the inside in order to let Jesus in. Jesus is not going to force anything on us, but Jesus is, is relentlessly persistent in loving us. The fullness of that love can be ours, but we have to open the door of our hearts. We have to push aside the things that are in the way of opening that door. We have to set aside the priorities, the, the hurts and traumas of the past, and step into a new future that is grounded in the love of God made known in Jesus Christ. It is a powerful, awesome, and wonderful thing. No one expects us to do it perfectly. It's, it's about progress and not perfection. We'll get knocked off center, we'll get pulled off the path, but God is always there to graciously welcome us back into the journey and into the process. This is a beautiful and wonderful thing. We are called. We are called to be servants of God each in our own way. As we serve God, we grow in, in body, mind, and spirit. Our hearts can become filled with love, filled with grace, filled with peace and hope. And the best way to hold on to those things is to give them away to others. Show them, show them what love and peace and hope are all about by the way we live and move and have our being. It is a wonderful and gracious thing. It is subtle. It is powerful. Let it be. Amen. Before we begin our Litany of Light for the season of Epiphany, I invite us all into a time of meditation, reflection, and quiet contemplation. The idea is, is to loosen your grip on your thoughts and your feelings, simply rest in the presence of, of the stillness of this moment without any judgment without any concern, without any anxiety. It helps to focus on your breathing. Notice the sensation of air moving in and out of your nostrils as you breathe, or the sensation of your chest or abdomen rising and falling as you inhale and exhale. I will ring a bell for us to start, and the meditation will conclude with the beginning of the litany.
a litany of light for the season of Epiphany. Arise, shine, all inheritors of God's light. You came and heard the light of God has come into our world. It reached across time and space into our hearts, and nations will come to its brightness. In him there is no darkness at all. Shine in our hearts, Lord Jesus. Arise, shine, bearers of Christ's light. You came and saw that the light of God's Son brings salvation, proclaims God's justice and love, overcomes the darkness and gives new life. In him there is no darkness at all. Shine in our hearts, Lord Jesus. Arise, shine, privileged ones who live in the light of Christ. You came and followed. Christ redeemed our world and draws us into a loving family from every tribe, nation, and culture. In him there is no darkness at all. Shine in our hearts, Lord Jesus. Arise, shine, bearers of God's light. No longer be satisfied with your old life. Go and tell others. Learn to love your neighbor as yourself, so that they too may know Christ and the hope his message brings. In him there is no darkness at all. Shine in our hearts, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. The rhythm of life is yours, O God. The changing of the seasons, the busyness of the day, and the night's stillness. Youth's energy and age's measured pace. For daylight followed by hours of darkness. For the time of letting go and of taking off the clothes of the day. For the time of lying down and being covered by the night's intimacy the overlapping of the seen and the unseen, heaven and earth, flesh and angels, body and spirit, rest and dying and new life, all a part of your rhythm, O God. Thanks be to you. Amen. And now let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, let us pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When you leave this place, go forth in peace. Be assured the past is forgiven and the future is in God's hands. Return no person evil for evil. Remember the poor. Pray for the sick. Make no peace with injustice in this world. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.
Thank you.